G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Trucks, Tinnies and Trebles. Um, today's Thursday, so we're gonna do a three minute Thursday. I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna try and keep it to three minutes. You guys know it's probably gonna blow out. How good is this backdrop? I'm in Cape York. I'm at the tip of Cape York, which we call Pajinka. Pajinka is the northernmost point of the Australian continent. And I'm up here filming for the main channel, Wild Reaches. Uh, forget your merch, wildreaches.com. Uh, forward slash shop, heaps of gear there. But yeah, I'm filming for Wild Reaches and um, I've just been, actually, let's get straight to the FG knot and then, because that's what a lot of you are here for, the whatever was in the title about an FG not being the best knot in the world. And then for all of you who are just here for the, for the content and to have a chat and hear about what I'm doing at the moment, I'll do that at the end of the episode. So let's get straight to it. So the FG knot is a knot that I've gone to probably the last three big trips, you know, like for when I'm chasing big barramundi, even down on the reef, you know, chasing Spanish mackerel, those big fish, you know, GTs, things like that, that are really gonna pull. I need to use bigger leader, and so I've gone to the FG knot, and it, see, and it doesn't, doesn't fail me. It's brilliant. I had one fail me the other day because I stuffed it up and it slipped. So that, that's what this is about. Talking about how to do it, what not to do, what like what corners not to cut to give you guys a knot that's gonna land you that big fish. So we'll, do this, we'll get into it straight away. Now what I wanna do is use a bit of rope or two bits of rope to make it clear for you guys how I'm winding it and then I'll do it with a braid and some 80 pound leader and show you how it pulls up tight. It's a bit tricky to show you the exact detail with a GoPro. So what I wanna do is use this rope. So, okay, so the, the black rope here, which is far too long, just give me a sec. Okay, that'll do. The black rope is your braid, okay? Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna wrap this in my right hand. I want you guys to do the same. If you're left-handed, use your left hand. I wrap that around my, around my pinky, like this, and you wanna be able to give that some tension. So that obviously goes to your rod tip. Now, this one here is your leader. No matter what size leader you're using, this knot is gonna work. So leader goes over the braid, like this. Give yourself a good tag, doesn't matter how long. Um, well, don't make it too short, give yourself a long tag. Now you go over the braid, and then we're gonna go under on each side. We're going under, okay? So under the top. Now this isn't gonna pull up real well because it's it's rope, but this is simply just for a demonstration. And then go under the bottom edge, and as you're doing it, keeping this nice and tight and keeping your pinky pulling on that braid. Then go under the top, under the bottom. Okay, under the top, under the bottom. Now that looks like shit because it's rope, okay? But that's what we're doing. I'll do that again real quick. We're going over the top of your braid. We're gonna go under, 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 and so on and so forth. And I go between 16 and 20 times. So today we're gonna go 20, just to be safe. I'll get rid of that rope now. And we're gonna do that with the actual braid and the actual leader. This is, the, this is the leader right here. I'm using 80 pound, it's like whipper snipper cable. And the reason I'm using that is for big barramundi. I like, does this say, well this is 0.78 of a millimeter. So to me this is too small. I wanna use something at least 0.9 of a millimeter if I'm chasing barramundi because I wanna catch, you know, if you are gonna hook that big fish like 85 to, to you know, a meter 10, something like that, or even bigger, um, you don't want to be running 40 pound leader or 60 pound leader and get busted off and lose that fish of a lifetime. And that's what I've decided. Like for years I've fished 40, 50 and 60 pound and I've lost some big fish and I've caught thousands and thousands of barramundi and um, you know, it, it's great. But I'm happy now to, to uh, spook a couple of smaller fish, I suppose you'd say, which, which rarely happens. Like I was catching fish the other day we had a fishing session the other day and I caught maybe 15 to 20 barra in a short period of time and they were all like 45 centimetres up to 55 centimetres and they didn't care about 80 pound leader. So you're really not spooking them, but if you do hook that big one, you're safe, okay? Now let's get back to it. So I'm gonna cut a piece of leader off that is about a metre long and the braid. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's wrap that around your pinky. Give it that nice bit of tension. Now we're gonna get our leader. And I'm coming up about 60 mil on your braid there to see you've got plenty. Run it over by about 120 mil. Okay, we're going over the top of the braid to begin with, over the top. Now once it's over the top, we're gonna go under and under and under, okay? So under there, underneath. We're gonna go, let's just do it 16 times. That's three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. Now you can see what's happened there is it's just worked its way back along that leader. Kept tension there the whole time. So now what you're doing is running your leader, loosen your finger off like that, run your leader up along your braid, and you're gonna get that tag of braid that you've got left, and we're gonna do uh, a half hitch over both the leader and the braid. We're gonna do two of those. Do it up a little bit higher, like that, nice and loose and then just slide it down onto your knot. Do that twice. Slide it down. Okay, and that's it. So now that's that's sort of like, that's half tied in. Okay, now I can show you guys what I've done. This lead is a pain in the ass. Hopefully, you can see that. So this next part is the most important part of the whole knot. You wanna, you wanna put some tension on this knot and it has to be enough that you're gonna watch the braid, which at the moment is blue, it's like a light blue color. And as you put tension on it, it's gonna pull into your leader and the, the, whatever color braid you're using will darken. It'll change color slightly, which means it is tensioned into that leader just enough for it to be perfect and not slip. So that has to happen. You have to see your, your braid change color. But to do that, you're gonna need to put some pressure on. So grab yourself a rag like this. Wrap your leader around your hand and we're going to pull, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but then we're going to pull until it changes colour. Okay, now once that's done, you're safe to cut your tag of, of your leader. So I want to give it about 5 mil above your braid, above the knot, just like that. Can you see that? So not much, 5 mil, but the trick here is I always melt this tip with a lighter. Now, I, I, what the whole idea is of the FG is that your braid is pulling into that leader and it's binding in that hard that it's never gonna slip through. But I like as a backup to melt that tip there and tap it with your finger and flatten it out, turn it into like a little bell shape. You can see that shape there now and there's no way that that can slip back past that that bit of melted leader there now. All right, so once you've done that, now you're just doing half hitches up and over your braid just to, just to tie off your braid. So grab your tag, go just over the braid, keep that tension on your line. You're gonna do, I like to do six. So one, two, again, do it up high and then just slide it down. Three and six. Now you can cut that off, cut your tag. And that's it guys, that is an FG knot. You see that there, hopefully you guys can see that. So that's it, that is your FG knot. Now the beauty of an FG knot is, uh, basically it's so slim. This will fit through any any fishing rods eyelets. Now the one issue is the little, the little bell that I've done on the end of the leader when I cut it and melted it. That's the only thing you wanna, you wanna keep that as small as possible. So when you're winding your leader back through into your eyelets, it's not gonna, it's not gonna grab. But I haven't had any trouble with that. You can see that that is probably the slimmest knot, the slimmest knot out there. And it's, and it's apparently the strongest. I haven't had any trouble with this. You'll see in this, in this footage now, yesterday one of the boys hooked a, um, we thought it was a big Jewfish because one of the other boys was, was onto a Jewfish and, uh, and Brad's hooked what we thought was a Jewy. It could have been for a few seconds and it turned into a shark. On the end, we got the bloody, it was on a vibe. We got the vibe back and it actually snapped the wire inside the vibe so he lost a treble. He actually snapped the metal wire, the stainless steel metal wire before the FG knot failed. So this is, in my opinion, the best knot out there. The reason I've gone to this knot is I used to do a, Oh, it's like a bimini twist with then a double Albright, I think it was. I've done that for about 10 years for my barrow fishing. And it works perfectly up to 60 pound leader to 30 pound braid. And when I'm when I'm chasing these bigger barrel, when I'm out of the reef, it just doesn't cinch up. For some reason, it just doesn't cinch up. I've tried so many different things. And that's what made me switch to the FG and I'm really happy with it. So that's an FG knot. Hopefully you guys get a bit of value out of that and um, hopefully it enhances your fishing. You can tie on some bigger leader and hopefully you'll get yourselves a big barramundi. All right, so if that's all you're here for, see you later. Thank you for watching. Um, come back next week for another 
another tip, you know, um, truck stings and trebles is all about coming out to these locations where I'm filming wild reaches and reviewing my gear. Everything that I use and trust out here in the bush, whether it's good or bad, you're going to get an honest, an honest review, honest feedback from someone who's out here in the harshest environments actually using this gear and testing it out. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe because we've just started this channel and we're trying to grow it. So you should subscribe if you like it and you've got some value out of this. Share it with your mates if they're fishermen and they're into this kind of thing. I'm sure they'll get some value too. It's all about, you know, the four wheel drive, the camping and the fishing. So everything, everything that I do. And to all of you who are here for a chat, it's been absolutely amazing so far. I've got to come back. I've been here for nearly two weeks now up here at Pajinka and the people are just absolutely amazing. They all knew the show. Um, they all want to take me out. There's, there's islands, I don't know if you can see them here behind me. Today's a bit overcast, but there's so many islands out here. So out here behind me or to my side is um, uh, the Torres Strait Islands going up to Papua New Guinea. So this is the old land bridge where Australia was actually connected to Papua New Guinea via a land bridge and the Gulf of Carpentaria was uh, a big lake. And so when you look at all these islands, you can see that they, you know, it's like a mountain range that would have cut through and that's all that, that, that's all these islands are to this day is islands, but it used to be a mountain range that would cut through to Papua New Guinea, which is just so cool. And um, the wildlife here has been amazing. Nearly every day we're seeing crocodiles in the, in the beautiful um, clear water out the front here along the coastline and, and up the rivers. And we've, we've caught Saratoga and Barramundi, Mangrove Jack, you know, we're eating oysters. We're, um, I've met an amazing family. I kept, I camped down at their shack and, you know, that the boys were cooking us dinner every night, all different traditional meals and, um, you know, cooking turtle underground. It, it's just, it's just been amazing. Um, and from here, I'm heading down to Aracoon. I'm actually leaving here today, which is really hard to do. And I'm heading down to Aracoon to continue filming down there. And, uh, and then we're going out to the desert after that, to central Australia. So it's gonna be a big trip. Really missing my family, but um, they're actually flying up to Cairns in, in about a week and meet me there, which is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, that's it, guys. It's been season eight. It's going to be a bloody good season for you guys to watch. If you've got any questions about this knot, put it in the comments below or any questions about other knots or anything to do with fishing, um, put it in the comments below and I'll try and answer them in the next episode. Yeah, or if you've got any tricks to make this knot better, please let me know in the comments below. All right, we better wrap that up. That is a wrap for another episode of Trucks, Tinnies and Trebles. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, please help me grow the channel and subscribe. Get your merch, wildreaches.com forward slash shop. Um, yeah, send comments, share it with your mates, do all that stuff. I really appreciate you all. And I'll see you next week for another three minute Thursday on Trucks, Tinnies and Trebles. You.